Hey everyone, this is Nick, and in this video series I'm going to do a tutorial on how I put together this rocket animation in Godot. So it's uh, kind of long, so I've divided it up into a few different videos, and each video is going to be time stamped so that you can follow along or jump to any section that you like. You can also download all the assets that I use in this video from the GitHub link in the description if you want to follow along or just use the assets or whatever else is in the project for anything that you like. So I hope you like it and let's get started. All right, so my drawing is complete and I've separated out the individual pieces that I want to import into Godot. I have all my scene elements as well as some shapes I'm gonna use for particles, as well as my gradients that I'm gonna use for the sky and the transition from the sky into space. So let's take a look at how to set those scenes up in Godot now. So in Godot, I already have a main scene defined and this is the scene that's going to play when we hit play. Um, but I'm going to drag the elements that I want into the scene. So my main scene is going to be for my background and the clouds. And I'm going to have two other scenes for the rocket and the planet. So let's do that right now. I'm going to click this plus button up here. And this is going to be a 2D scene. I'm going to double click that and rename it planet. And make sure to save it. And I'm going to add another one, and this will also be a 2D scene, and I'm going to call this Rocket. Make sure to save that, and there we go. So let's go ahead and add our background elements in our main scene here. Um, so I'm just going to click and open the folder in the file system over here on the left, and just drag in the elements that I want. So um, I want my sky background. And to make sure I'm actually getting it within the bounds of the viewport, I'm going to turn on snapping up here in the menu. And then just zoom in and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. I'm going to drag in my gradient. And then finally, I'm going to make another child of the sort of transition from sky into space manually. So I'm going to add a child node, and this will be a color rect. And I'm going to drag out the edges of my color rect to make sure it fills the width. And if you hold shift while you move something, you'll actually move it along an axis. So either X or Y, whichever one you start. And that just is a good way to help you move things in a straight line. And then I'm going to change the color of the color rect. Just click on the color over here in the inspector and the little eyedropper. And then I'm going to click right at the top of my gradient. So I'm also going to resize this because I want there to be enough room for the rocket to move around. And I'm also going to resize my transition here. So I'm going to add my ground and I'm going to turn on snapping again. There we go. I'm going to add my clouds that go in the background. 
And these actually need to be behind the ground, so I don't want them to be children or anything. So I'm going to make sure they're above the uh, ground in the seam tree. And then my next set of clouds here. There we go. Looks good. And I'm basically just going to keep dragging in elements. I can turn off snapping now because the other foreground clouds, um, they don't have to be exactly positioned. So let's go ahead and do that. One thing that might be useful is to create a node in here as a child so you can actually uh, group things a bit better. So I'll create a node and call this foreground clouds and then add the clouds that I just dragged in as children of that node. That way you can hide or move around everything at once. So I'm basically just going to keep adding clouds so I can duplicate them using control D right in the scene or drag them in from my file system. There we go. I think that's pretty good for a sort of basic group of foreground clouds. So now I'm going to hide that and I'm going to make another node in here for the clouds that are going to be moving around in the background. So we'll just say background clouds. Hopefully that's not confusing with the other actually named background clouds. Uh, but I want my foreground clouds to be behind, or sorry, the background background clouds to be behind everything. So I'm going to make sure that's selected and then just drag in some more of the same clouds and they're automatically children of the selected node. So for these, I want these to be smaller. So I'm going to hit S on my keyboard and hold shift to uniformly scale each of these because I want these to appear farther away. And then just duplicate those and stick them wherever you want. All right, I think that looks okay for the clouds that will be in the background. Um, so for this entire group, I'm actually going to decrease the opacity. So if I select the node that's the parent of all these clouds, and this is why it's another good uh, reason to group everything within a node, because it will apply whatever I do to all of them. I'll drag down the sort of alpha channel under modulate. Um, that looks okay. So I'll turn on my foreground clouds and there we go. So that's a pretty basic setup. Looks pretty good for my first scene here. Let's move on to setting up the planet scene. In my planet scene, I'm actually gonna manually create a new child node, a sprite, because when you do that, it automatically centers it on the origin of the scene. And to that sprite, I'm gonna add my sort of planet body. Right there, there we go, and it's centered. And I'll rename this sprite body. And for the rest of them, I can sort of just drag them on there. They don't have to be perfectly exact because we're going to animate them moving. So they're going to be children of the body. So let me find my planet land. There we go. And actually, I want to add my atmosphere. And that's not going to be a child of the body, but it is going to be a child of the main sort of node in the scene. So we'll add another sprite. Call it atmosphere, and we'll load in the atmosphere PNG here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and go to visibility, modulate, and then turn that down so it looks a bit more of like a sort of transparent atmosphere for the planet. There we go. And as another child of the body, I actually want to add a light 2D. And this is what we're going to use to mask everything behind it in my, just as the same way I constructed the planet in my previous video, which I'll link in the description. Um, so in my light 2D, I'm going to add my texture and it's just going to be the same atmosphere texture. I'm going to open that up, but I'm going to scale this down. So you can click on your sort of scale tool in the menu or S on your keyboard. And if you hold shift, it'll scale uniformly. And I just want it to be right around the planet body itself. Um, and I'm going to just hide that for now. And there we go. So that's the planet scene. Let's move on to the rocket scene. 
So for my rocket scene, I'm just going to drag in the sprites for my rocket body. Try to align it to the center here. For my rocket capsule, try to align that to the center as well and make sure it's behind the body. And then I'm going to create a, another node here and use this to group all of the flames. So we're going to animate the flames as well. So as a child of the flames group here, I'm going to add a few of these fire sprites. There we go. So I kind of want the one in the middle to be on top of the other ones. So I'm going to drag that to the bottom of the tree. And there we go. So I got my rocket flames. And that is our rocket scene. So we've set up each one of our scenes here. And we'll leave it at that for this first video. In the next video, we'll start to animate each one of these scenes, starting with the main scene and all of the clouds here in the background and the foreground. So hope to see you then. Thanks.